and I wanted to open it up. Hey Tucker, what's up buddy? Thanks for stopping by. All right. I'm hoping this is what I think it is. I didn't confirm before I started opening. Hold on, I'm trying to get set up. All right, here's a test. Can you hear, can you hear kids yelling in the background? Hey man, what's up? Zhao, thanks for coming by. That reminds me, I was going to turn on some uh, Bossa Nova while I was doing the unboxing, but I clicked on a different playlist and said. Um, so, all right. Well, let's see. Let's see what we got here. I'm really excited about this. I'm very excited. So since I've been doing some, uh, oh, I got a place. I got to have a place to put these. I don't want to throw them all over the floor. Hold on. I got, I got a box in the hallway here. Hi. There's packing paper. Can you hear, you can't hear the music? Yeah. All right, here we go. I don't know. Can you hear? I've got kids right outside my window. So I'm kind of trying to balance the sound here between some music and me talking. If anything is like not working well, let me know and I'll make some adjustments. I'm going to change what I'm listening to. All right, I have a very small space that I'm working in here. So bear with me. Um, so one thing I've been working on since I, um, since things have been going better on TikTok is, uh, is working with partners. So I reached out to Fujifilm because I use their gear and they sent me some stuff out to try. Thanks for the likes, I appreciate it. Helps get some more get more viewers in here. Here, let me show you. I gotta grab one thing, I'll be right back in 15 seconds. All right, so uh, five years ago, I, wa I realized I wasn't taking pictures every day. I mean, I've been a professional photographer for um, 16, no, 18 years now. I've been a professional photographer. And um, the way I had my gear set up was really, you know, packed up nice and neat in my bag so I could take it to shoots and, and, uh, so I could take it to shoots and just take it right out of the bag and start shooting, but it was not conducive to um, taking pictures every day. So what I did was five years ago now, this month, I bought this camera. Um, this is my X-T20. My gear that I use for client shoots are um, Canon DSLRs. I have a couple 5D Mark III's and uh, no, just like three lenses, but I bought this to take around with me every day because it was nice and compact and I'd use their um, X100. Um, I had rented to take on vacation one time. Yeah, thanks. So this is mine. 
Um, I've had this for five years. I reached out to Fuji and they said they'd send me these out to test out. So I'm gonna have these cameras for like three weeks, this camera, this lens. So I'm gonna use this uh, with both this 56 1.2 and I'm also gonna use my, this is a 23. Uh, the X-Pro3 I think came out last year maybe. I've used it, I think I rented it once for something. I've used the X100 before. Um, so since, if you don't know, these are crop sensor cameras. So effectively it's, um, you know, 1.5 times. Yeah, I know. I don't always know what's coming out with all the different stuff. So this 23 millimeter is effectively a 35 millimeter on a full frame camera. This 56 is about an 80. So what, 20, 7, 83, I guess it's more like an 84, 85. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be shooting with these and also a combination of these for the next few weeks. I'll do some photo walks and stuff. Um, I, as tempted as I was to try out their 50 F1.0, that thing is massive. And mostly what I use this stuff for is like everyday shooting, um, photo walks, street stuff, family stuff. Um, so I didn't want to walk around with that 51.0. It's massive. I have been tempted personally when I buy it, because I want a 50 millimeter. I've been tempted to get the, because this is the 23.12. I've been tempted to get their 51.2. Uh, sorry, but I'm getting uh, distracted here. This is their 23 F2.0. Uh, they have a 50 F2.0 that's just slightly bigger than this, I think. That's without the hood on. Um, I like how compact this lens is. This lens I know is going to be significantly bigger, but I really wanted to try their 1.2 and see if I like this. Yeah, this is a great... You miss it. What happened to it? Did you sell it? Upgrade it? Did it break down? Let's see, and some paperwork. Better set that aside. Had to sell it. Now oh, that sucks. I hate it when that happens. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open the lens first. I think I'm gonna save the camera for last. So let's see, I'll get this stuff out. I'm excited for this too, because um, I've been wanting to try I've, I shot a couple times with the X100, a different models, the original one and like the S or something, or the T, I can't remember. But I've been wanting to try the X-Pro3, because um, this one clearly, you know, this is more the standard, you know, SLR style and not the rangefinder style. Um, You know, I'm doing this gear video. I'm not really like a gear head. I have, I really use a total of four lenses, which sounds like a lot, but I only have one lens really for this camera that I use all the time. And um, I don't know, I don't, I don't really count this. I have this, but I don't really use it very often. This is an old lens I borrowed from a friend and he just let me keep it because he wasn't really shooting. It's an old um, Zeiss um, 50 millimeter 1.4. It's manual focus. It's a cool lens, but it's busted. It won't stop down past F4. No, F2, really. That's, that's, oh, that looks nice. Um, this, so that's at 1.4, it'll do two, 2.8, and then it sticks. I can't get it. So it really only has three apertures. And it, like I said, it's manual focus. I shoot a lot of people moving action. You know, I don't really care for, uh, I prefer autofocus. You know, anything that gives me an advantage to get better photos, I'm going to take it. Um, it's a, decent lens, but I don't use it very much. Um, anyway, so those are the only two lenses I have for that. For my Canon gear, I have a 24 1.4, a 50 1.4, 
and a 70 to 200 two eight and that's it and i mean that's more than a amateur probably has but also like i said i do this professionally so i have a very pretty uh, uh scaled down kit for a professional so oh yeah i like the weight it's like heavy enough that you know it's significant glass but it's um it's not too heavy in my opinion and a good hood i love me a good hood <laughs> this one um this is this was not the stock one this stock one that came with that lens was a little plastic thing this is a metal it's got that kind of vintage um it's a fuji film but i love this lens hood is pretty cool looks like those like like uh like a ones all right so let's check out the glass on this again i'm not really super deep into gear they have um another version of this that's apd it's a uh, i can't i don't remember how to say it it's a special kind of filter or something yeah thanks tucker i appreciate that i got the one without the filter on it the apd filter um because that affects the APD lets less light in. I'm going to Google that. I can't remember what APD stands for. Um, I'm looking. Apodization. Okay. It's an apodization filter. It's supposed to make the bokeh smoother and stuff. But I looked at some reviews and it seemed like it did a little bit. But but at the cost of your 1.2 then becomes like a 1.7. So it, it, it like blocks some of the light that's coming through. But um, whew. yeah, I like this for sure. One, two. So I'm excited. I haven't had anything wider than an F2 really. Well, that's a 1.4, but it's manual. I haven't had anything wider than an F2 on this that I regularly use. So I'm excited to try out this. It's not, uh, it's big, but it's not as much as I thought it would be. I thought it would be bigger than this, but that's good. I want it to be more compact. So here's what the... This is one of the small, this is definitely one of the smallest lenses that they have other than their pancake. I think their pancake lens is like a 27 millimeter, but I mean, you know, it's, it's bigger, but it's not, it's not so bad. It's like the whole lens is about just a little bit wider. We're docking here. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. All right. Uh, anyways. Yeah, it's a good size. It's not too... I don't know. We'll see if it seems like it's too big once I'm out shooting with it. This is just the standard. Pretty nondescript. Now that definitely makes this whole setup a lot bigger. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm excited to try it. It's obviously a little less discreet for like street photography, having a lens like that. But I really want to uh, try this one. I figured I'd try the bigger one. Um, this one is, this is my camera and lens. Um, the X-T20 and the 23 millimeter F2. And then this is what I'm... Um, Fujifilm sent me to try these out. I told him I wanted to try this lens. So, uh, 56, 1.2. So, I don't know. I wanted to try the bigger one and the one that I really wanted um, for shooting uh, some street stuff. And if... I figure if it's too big, then when I go to buy one, I'll just buy the the F2. Uh, the 50 millimeter f2 so i'm excited for this because it's the rangefinder style camera 
that in the middle. Here's a little uh, light reading, I guess. How many pages is 320 page manual? Good thing I already know how these work for the most part. That's weird. I don't know why that's in here. That was for a lens that I don't have here. Thanks for the likes, friends. Oh, they sent me a card, I guess. This doesn't look like it's a very fast card. All right. Lord. So yeah, this is... I hope these batteries are charged. I mean, this is really a badass looking camera. It's not as heavy as I expected it to be. I mean, obviously that's a good thing. I don't want a big heavy camera. The point of what I would use these for is like shooting like street style stuff. Yeah, right. She! Ah, man, it's cool. So if I remember right, I didn't read up on this again since I knew it was coming. I, I probably could have given you more information that way. It's got this little screen on the back, which I think will show if you're doing the film simulator. Like, Fuji has all their films simulated that you can set in here. And I think this screen will show you, like, you know, it looks like the roll of film on the back. Yeah, I love this look, too. That's very cool. It's in good shape for, like, a loner. Let's pop a battery in there. Okay. Charged enough, it looks like. So... At the screen, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I I use the screen to shoot through a decent amount. Um, if I'm if I want to hold the camera down low, I think you can live view shoot on the screen even though it's flipped backwards. I think you can shoot like this, which would be good for this like kind of angle to shoot downwards to be a little more, you know discreet like you've got that top view viewfinder but I watched uh, I watched a video recently with Joe uh, Joel Meyerwitz Meyerwitz talking about um, he was talking about the benefits of shooting with a range fi finder style camera because of the viewfinder being on the side so I'm curious to see how I like that or not. Be I've done it before, but I wasn't thinking about it from his perspective that he had, which he's talking about. Here, let me get this strap on. out of the way. So he was talking about when you're shooting with, you know, the SLR style camera, you're other eye is over here or over there so your your vision is going basically 100% through the viewfinder whereas if you're shooting here you know you can shoot with your right eye here and your left eye can you know watch the world <laughs> around you um, that he in his opinion that brings the photographer like more into um, more into um, the scene being more of a part of a scene because you're viewing it with your naked eye and not just through the viewfinder. So, all right. So the camera itself, you know, it's a, it's a decent amount. I mean, it's not terribly bigger. It's really like, it's really the same height. The height is the same. I mean, granted, this whole camera across the top is as tall as the center of this camera here. So, um, and zoom in a little bit. It's, uh, 
how much wider but it's wider it is like it's that much wider is that like half an inch maybe three quarters but you know that's a cool camera I think let me zoom back out I let's I like the metal on the dials and it's got that texture I like that it's that kind of like I don't know if there's a technical term for that but the more like kind of machined whereas this one's more basic but all right all right let me pop let me pop a lens, this lens on here. Which, which part do the cannons have? Sometimes the delay between the messages and what I'm saying, I'm not sure what. Now, obviously, I mean, that's, that's a lot bigger of a setup overall. So, I mean, that so much of that's just the hood. It doesn't look like as big of a difference when you take the hood off. I mean, I like the hoods more for protection than, you know, I don't mind a little lens flare. I mean, that's kind of in anyways, people like that. But, uh, Let's see what happens when I... Oh boy, they're gonna make me do all the setup. Huh. <laughs> all right. Well, let's just, how long is this gonna take? Whoops. All right. I'll change the time later. Okay, so you can, you can do the live view, shoot through there. That's a good question. The weight difference. Honestly, it's not as much as you would think. I mean... I mean, I this one, you know, clearly it is going to be heavier, but I don't think... Uh, it's not enough that I'm like, oh, holy shit. Like, I picked up... I think I picked up the 50... 1.0... And it's it's massive. Some of those Canon lenses, they're 1.2. They're 85 1.2. Oh, I know what it was. Canon had like a what was it? An 85 1. Point. No, they had a variant. Hi, thanks for coming. It's going well today. I got a new um, camera to test out here from Fuji. They sent me something for like a like a review model. The this here the fifth. So this is um, the Fujifilm X Pro Three and the fifty six millimeter um, f one point two. So it's it's basically an eighty five millimeter equivalent. I know what it was. Canon had a short run, so you know everybody knows their fifty millimeter one point two lens. They made a version of that that was a one point lens. It looks like the same. Uh, it might be slightly bigger, but it's an f one point zero. And it that thing is heavy. Yes, XT1. Great cameras. This is this is mine that I've had for five years, the XT20. Hi, bud. Uh XT20 is this is the one I've had for five years and the 23 millimeter F2. Um, so this was my current setup. I wanted to try this. Yeah, this thing, this is really, I'm just going to take that off for the, and the glass on that is nice. So I, I was packing something up once and I have my light on and I noticed this, the ring light reflections on the, and I recorded a video like this for like 20 minutes, just trying to get different. <laughs> 
iterations on. You want to sit on there? Yeah. Okay. Got my two-year-old visiting the... I said visiting like he doesn't live here. He lives here. He's visiting the live. Let's see what happens. If you can see that. Oh, yeah. You can see that move in there. Yeah. Visiting the room. Visiting the live is what I meant. <laughs> That's cool. So, oh, so see, look. Provia... Provia 400. I wonder how you change that. What? Yeah, he's in here. So that's kind of cool. I wonder how you change that. My camera had something in here, like... There's like a... Is there a quick menu? Image, you know you gotta. Oh yeah, image quality. Got to switch to raw for sure. Oh there, film simulation. So okay, so let's see what it says. Provia is their standard. Velvia, Astia, Chrome, uh, Pro Neg High, Pro Neg Standard, Classic Neg. Eterna Cinema. Mm, that sounds interesting. Acros. I use this setting sometimes when I shoot on mine. Generally, I just shoot in the standard because I'm shooting in raw and I don't need the like... Then I edit it the way that I want it to look. I don't do like a thing for it. So if you change it to Chrome and then when you're back here... That's a cool feature. I mean, you know, I, not necessary, but I'm, I'm not going to lie. I do like it. What are the other ones? Velvia. Yeah, I wonder if there's, there must, there's probably a quick way to change that or get to it. Gets a lot of fingerprints. There we go. That looks good. So, I don't know. Um... I doubt I'm going to get, like, a focus. Yeah, now that you've seen it, it seems necessary. Display. It's not going to give me... It is a cool feature. All right, here's what I think I'm going to try here. If you want to bear with me. Um, curious to take these outside. and see what they look like. Here's... I'll just use their card that they sent for now. Oh, their card is in a different place oh it's got two it's got two um card slots there i like having the card slot here mine the card slots next to the battery i'm not as crazy about that also on this one I don't, i'm also not crazy about where the i i don't usually use a tripod except for when i use this for video but then the tripod plate blocks the battery door. So that kind of... Yeah. I mean, the build quality on this camera, I've been very happy with. It's held up really well. Like I said, I shoot with it all the time. I've had it for five years. The thumb rest fell off. So that's why the cork is here. Um, I made my own custom thumb rest for it out of a tequila bottle cork. Um, and it's been on here for like probably a year and a half. So, um, cause the original thumb rest came off and it was just like really sticky spot. And I, of course that's where you keep your thumb. So I just put a custom one on there. Kind of a cool feature. Maybe I should make these. <laughs> I can't imagine that would, um, there'd be enough money to, uh, make it profitable. Got a grip to fix the tripod centering issues. Oh, the grip. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you could definitely go that route. Um, okay. Let me think about what I need to be able to go outside and take pictures. I need... Um, I need a... I'd rather have a strap on there, obviously. So let's see. How quick am I at 
putting a camera strap on. Uh, I like that's I like the peak thing. Um, the quick on and off. If I need to take it off, usually if I'm doing video or something, I'll take it off. But wait a minute, something's not right about this. How is this supposed to? Oh. Oh, you gotta do a whole thing. I don't wanna mess with that, damn it. I forgot the straps are like a whole deal. Cause you've gotta put these on, these triangular pieces on, and then run the straps through that. All right. Um, I have an extra, I think I have an extra set of these. Well, all right, here, here's what we'll do. I'm gonna pop these off of here. This is the type, the level of um, problem solving you need to work as a photographer. Think quickly, right? All right, let's see if I can take this off in a relatively short amount of time. Hey, thanks. Appreciate it. I like, um, I've always liked Bossa Nova, but I've been into it a little extra lately. Boy, this is not as easy. I was like, oh, I'm just gonna pop this thing off, move it over to the other camera. Well, at this rate, All right, plan B. Oh, they threw a couple cards in here. Here's a 64. Put it in there for the hell of it. All right. See if I can get this in there. I think we're about there. I always forget about this when I rent cameras and stuff. They usually don't come with straps on them. And what I use on my um, Canon gear is that, well, I could have done that. Okay. I'm reformulating here. I'm still going to put these on just for the hell of it. They don't, the cameras don't come with uh straps on them when you rent them and it always is kind of a hassle I think I've got what I need to fix this though all right shortcut to format the SD that's a good question all right here's what we're gonna do Pause for one second, I gotta grab something. Here we go, we're doing it. You guys familiar with these? <laughs> the Black Rapid. It's a it's a little more, this is what I wear for my, uh, you know, makes me look like, so everybody knows I'm a photojournalist, but you know what? I think maybe, let's see. Well, I was gonna put both cameras on this. It's a lot easier than putting a real camera strap on. Yeah, so what it is, is you put two, 
because I always shoot with two cameras when I'm shooting client work because I like to shoot with primes and I'll shoot with like a 24 one four on one camera and a 51 four on the other camera so that's a lot easier and then you know you've got two cameras and then you put the strap over your shoulders I bought this when I was doing weddings um, it's made it so much easier All right, there we go. All right, I'll show you my setup here in a second. I'm gonna move outside. All right. So this is gonna move around a bit here. So sorry if I, I'm gonna try not to shake you all too much. Yeah, the strap is black, uh, black rapid is the name of the strap um, I'll show I'll show them what they look like once I get outside so hold up we're moving get a nice view of my floor we've got a bunch of issues of National Geographic <laughs> all right sun's coming out outside it's not too bad out All right, here we go. So, I'm gonna put this up. Give me a second. All right, I gotta set my uh, tripod back up. I hope I'm not making people too dizzy. <laughs> All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this around. Oh, they moved the settings on me. I don't know how to turn my camera around anymore. Does anyone know where they put the... To change it? Shit. What? Ooh, it's windy. Well, I'm the I'm in TikTok. I'm in TikTok trying to change the thing to a rear-facing camera. It used to be you'd set you'd click in the like more or whatever and you could switch it. I want to do the front-facing camera. This is dumb feel like an old man. I don't know. Where would I be on the camera here? Let me switch it here. All right. I'm not going to be, so I'm going to step in front of the camera so you can see what I'm working with here. Hi, I hope I'm on the camera. This is the, this is the strap thing. Especially if you're shooting with something like big DSLRs, it really is like a saver. And when I used to shoot with just the regular camera straps, they'd always slide off my shoulder. So I would always be standing like this. And then being able to just, you know, if I'm waiting for something to happen, just have them like hang down by your side. It makes it a lot easier. It's overkill for something this size, honestly. I just put it on because it's, um, a lot easier to attach uh, this camera strap than my um, than the stock one that came with it. So, but yeah, if you're shooting like my Canon DSLRs with the 70 to 200 f 2.8, it makes a big difference um, having that weight kind of go across your shoulders a lot more. So, it is it is comfy actually. Not that, no, all I see in the top right of screen is it is the button to end the live. And I'm not sure what is going on with that exactly. All right, well, I'll just, I'll, if anyone's just joining, I got a new uh, camera to test out here. Um, it's the Fujifilm X-Pro3. I'll show you what I'm looking at. I'm gonna move this again. So sorry for 
moving around too much. So here's my plan is to, all right, show you what I'm seeing on this screen. All right, so I've got, if you're just stopping by, I'm using the Fuji Foam X Pro 3 with the 56, 56 millimeter F1.2. Man, it's windy. So I wanna see what it looks like on the screen here. Of course, there's a lot of glare. The buttons are all, oh, there's a quick button on the side right here. That changes the film. I wonder if that works with the back then. No, I guess you have to have it open. I wonder if it only shows the film stock on the back. I don't know. I'm not gonna lie, I don't mind this. Uh... It's got a nice sound to it. If you can hear, go full. Yeah, it sounds nice. It sounds different than my other one. All right, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna move back inside. It's really windy. I'm gonna move into a different room where I can uh, show some of where I'm at. So you can maybe hear me a little bit better. Hey, sweetie, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> it's fun having my kids on TikTok. They like to come by my lives. I hope this door is unlocked. All right. It's gonna be a little bit easier in here. And then we can shoot out the window. Yeah, slackline photo shoot. I think we're a little bit away from that. Sorry, I gotta do this in here for a few minutes. You're okay if you wanna stay, but I'm gonna talk. I'm on a live. Um, everybody can see my stylish footwear now. All right, I want to look at this camera a little bit more, but I wanted to get into like a decent spot where I could see it better. And it wouldn't be so windy. So it's, I'm going to compare that, the two, what they sound like. So it's always interesting to me to hear what the different cameras sound like. Oh, it was telling me the card was full. So hold on, I got to format. See if I can figure out how to format this card. I think it's just, uh, I think it's down here. Might as well format both of them. So another thing that I notice in the feel of it that's different is um, this uh, the the multi direction. I miss so my Canon has this the little multi direction controller is nice. This one just has these buttons. So if I want to do like, um. Oops, let me get that screen back on. If I want to do like a, if I want to change the point uh, selection, you've got to push the little directional arrows. It's not bad. It's just not as good as having this uh, multi-directional controller. So something I'll have to figure out. So this should, yeah, it's a lot easier changing the point
See, cause this I can go right in and move it around. Whereas on here, I mean, we're talking about small differences here, but on here I've got to push down to get the, the selection and then move it around from there. So it's not, you know, the biggest deal, but it's another step in the process of, um, whoops, sorry, let's get some of that glare off of there. You're getting a lot of reflection off my shirt. That's a pretty fast focus. All right, let's, I wanna hear the shutter on these. Here's my camera. You can tell mine's been used quite a lot. It's just like the slightest difference to it. Like having that in there. So this is interesting. It's got the ISO. So uh, Fuji has these dials, which are cool, but what I usually do instead of changing my shutter on here is I, I set it to this T mode and then you change the shutter. Like if you can see can, the shutter speed, um, you just change it with the dial and you can keep going. Whereas if I were to have it, <laughs> nice. I don't know. Do you want it to picture that or not? <laughs> if you have it on like, you know, say if I, if I had it on a 60th, all right, see on here, it's set to a 60th. And if I use the dial to try to change it, this dial, it will only change it like two thirds of a stop. So a full stop would be 125th. It'd go from 60 to 125. And it just gives you like the smallest window to change it two thirds of a stop either way. So you can't take it a full stop either way. So what I do is I use this setting. I don't know what the T stands for, T. And then if I need to change that quickly, cause you go from inside to outside and you've got to change like five or six stops right away. So to have to do it on the dial like that would be a hassle. So whereas if I keep it on here, I can just go. So look from inside, oh shit. And then to outside, it changes pretty qu quickly. But um, the other thing I do for these, I do a lot of custom settings. So one thing I'll do is, um, I do not use the shutter. Let's see what that looks like. Is this a touch screen? Yeah, thought it was. So the way that I set up my cameras are, um, I make, I take the autofocus out of here I don't like having autofocus on the shutter release button. Do you guys do that too? Do you set, do you take that off of there? So like on my camera here, you know, um, wait, what do I have this on? My, uh, I, this doesn't focus here. Let me do a quick, sorry, hold on. All right, so that's out of focus. This button doesn't do it. I can push down and take the picture. Um, this is what I use. I use this button for the autofocus. And the reason for that is, is I can set my area of focus. And then, so like this, if I wanna use the center point as my focus, um, see it's in the center of the picture right now, but if I don't, but if I want to take it like that, you'd have to move this dial over 
you'd have to move it around every time you want a different place to autofocus. But if I leave it in the center and I press this button to focus, then I can recompose the picture any way that I want. I can put the main point of focus on the side of the frame. And then when I push this button, it doesn't change the focus. I don't know if I explained that well enough. I mean, I'm not inventing anything here. I think most photographers I know do that sort of thing. But this one's not, since I just took it out of the box, it's not set up for that yet. This is makes it autofocus. Yeah, the focus is pretty quick. It's got so many extra buttons on this one. This is a button. That's the button that does the film. This button here, um, you can change the... Oh wait, here's the film simulation. Let's put it back to standard. Oh, that's one thing I wanted to look at. So if you look at the, here, let's look out here. The film simulation, you can see how it changes. See the back to normal, Provia to the standard. The Velvia is a lot more vivid. I mean, look at the color of the grass. You can see a change on the tree trunk there. It gets darker. If you look at the, especially that wood, the branches in the background, it gets a lot warmer. It's soft, yeah, it's a little softer. Classic chrome. I like that they tell you what it's for, but honestly, I don't use these because I like to edit them from raw files to look the way that I want. So if you have, if you use one of their like, whatever film simulations and you're shooting in raw you are still getting the raw file so like if you use one of their black and white and you shoot in raw you're still getting a color image it's just going to show you the image in this i think if i set it in raw and jpeg and it shot both it would give you the raw file plus a jpeg with the film um I haven't shot much with the simulations with RAW. I usually just shoot in the RAW file, although sometimes I'll shoot in JPEG on black and white. I, I, I'll sometimes use this Acros. I like this one. And it's got like a stand, um, different color filters. You can't see much of a change. Let's see if with that slide down there. You can see, well, you can see it. See how the colors in the slide change? Because they're like yellow and green. Um, I sometimes will shoot the JPEG so I can use this Acros plus the R filter because like it says, it darkens the skies considerably, which like, all right, I mean, sorry, this is real. Yeah, it's, that's more if it's blue. If the skies are blue, it will pull down the skies darker. I do like that, um, but like for me personally, so sometimes I'll shoot the black and white filter, but other than that, I don't usually usually use the film. See, cause again, looking at standard, I mean the Velvia is nice, but like, I'd rather, I like to start from more neutral. And if I need to edit something a little bit warmer, then I'll do it. Yeah, the direct, yeah. So that is true too. If I think if I wanna see something in black and white, you know, I can just use that to shoot black and white. I've gotta change. So there's so many custom features. Like on my camera, I shut the, set the shutter speed with this front dial. And right now the default is the back dial. So before I go out and actually shoot with this, I'm gonna switch everything around to the way that I like it, but I won't make you sit and watch me switch all the things around. These, these buttons are really interesting. They're just like, you know, flush right on the side there. And that some of, a lot, some of them are unmarked. I wonder what, I think this is probably like a preview. This is probably like a, what do you call it? Aperture preview. 
Yeah, five minutes. I'm going to wrap up here in just a few minutes. But um, it's a cool camera, and it is. So um, anyone who's just stopped by, this is, this is my camera and setup, the 23 and the X-T20, and this is what I'm trying out from Fujifilm. Um, I, am, I have to say, there's not as big of a weight difference as I would have expected. I mean, this one's clearly heavier because it's a bigger camera and a, and a much bigger lens. Let me take that hood off again. Both of them without the hood. It's not I'm trying to figure out the best way to show this. So, you know, it's probably 50% bigger, but this lens is so small that even this one, it's not so bad. But it's cool glass for sure. Can't wait to take it out shooting. So what I'm gonna do is probably within the next couple of days here, I'm gonna take both of these out and, um, and do a photo walk. I might do it live, I'm not sure. If I want to do one live, it might be too much to manage, especially if I'm trying to shoot two cameras. Here, I'll take these off here. I mean, their, their other models are massive. I can't remember what the next, I forget what their other model names are. Not the GFX system, their medium format system. They made one other camera that's similar to the X-T4, but it's a little bit bigger, and I think it's more geared towards video. And that camera is big. Sorry, I'm gonna get it a little closer here. Like hunched over too much looking at this screen. That's better. All right, so yeah, one more side by side. I don't know if this really, I mean, that's where you can see, you know, this one's longer by, or here, if you look at the bodies. It's a dec it's you know a decent amount longer, wider, whatever, however you want to say it, but they are basically the same height. It's just that the one on the left dips down on the sides, and this one's flat all the way across so and then these two lenses are like you know I mean you can see the width it's like probably an inch wider on that lens, but um, yeah. All right, well, this is really just like a first impression. I'm gonna go out and shoot and try um, each lens on each camera and, um, you know, I'll do a photo walk. I'll have to think about if I wanna do a live photo walk or just um, go out and shoot and show the results. And I like doing the live photo walks because it's fun to, um, talk with people while I'm out shooting and stuff. So I might do that like um, maybe Saturday or something. Might be a good day. I'll have to check the weather. I don't want to go out on a day that's as windy and cloudy as this. I'm going to look for a nice uh, sunny warm day. So anyways, all right. Well, thanks for stopping by and um, doing this first look here with me. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's great connecting with you all. I've been having a lot of fun doing all this and... Um, you know, I'd like to do more lives. Oh, keep an eye out. I've got uh, probably in the next week or two, I'm going to do some lives with some books um, these publishers sent me to check out. And um, I'm going to do a giveaway with some of the books too. There's like Magnum photographers and stuff. So it should be pretty cool. So yeah, thanks so much. Everybody take care and we'll see you soon.